10 o'clock, and that means if it's a Tuesday, 10 o'clock during hurricane season, it's time to track the tropics. From sunny central Florida, I'm meteorologist Eric Burris. And from, uh, from Savannah, Georgia, I'm WJCL 22, Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Nelson. So, Jeremy, we're getting closer now to the peak of hurricane season. We're in peak month, a couple of days away from the official peak. And while there is no name storm, there is something to track. Yeah, uh, just in the uh, last update here, the chance of tropical development is up to 70 percent. And this is way off in the eastern Atlantic. Uh, just a little bit of a swirl there you can pick up. Uh, in the eastern Atlantic, and this is uh, forecast to move to the west northwest over the next seven days. That's right. So it's something to watch. As you had mentioned, Jeremy, it has that high likelihood of formation over the next seven days time. Um, the idea, though, is that really these next couple of days, it doesn't develop. It's like mid to late week, as you had mentioned, um, but it's it's out over open water. It is far enough away that we are still, you know, when, when we look at time frames, we are still like 12 ish or so days away from any potential impact to the United States, should it make a direct beeline to the United States, but the models are certainly not showing that. No, in, in fact, the models, a lot of them, and we'll go over these, are showing this uh, sort of on that same track where it scoots a little bit north of the uh, northern windward, leeward islands, that island chain, and then it starts doing that northwest to north turn. So if it takes something like that, really the only island that would be uh, really watching very closely then would be Bermuda. So this is something a little longer uh, term down the road. So this is right. something we'd probably be watching almost 10, 12, maybe 14 days, as you have shown there. That's right. So let's do this then, Jeremy. Let's take a look at the raw computer model data, kind of get an idea of what we're tracking here. And I'm going to start with just the American GFS model and start it with this kind of sloppy area of low pressure that's hanging around Florida, um, bringing us some crummier-ish weather here the last couple of days and the next couple of days. But rolling through time on the American model, watch kind of the bottom of that screen there and the bottom of the Atlantic. And we see this is developing it into a hurricane and then more than likely recurving it, as you had mentioned, Jeremy, out near Bermuda and thankfully keeping it away. And then right at the end of the run here around September 15th, 16th, 17th, we're starting to see the American model perhaps developing another thing off the coast of Africa. Yeah, and the European model um, strengthens what could be Gabrielle a little bit later, maybe gets it organized a little bit later. And then uh, as you spin through that one, it also does show maybe some more tropical waves or something else trying to get going there in the eastern Atlantic. But uh, this one may be slightly farther south, but still uh, makes that turn very similar to the GFS. And I would also mention, too, that, you know, looking at the European, it is slower, it's further south. It really hones in on that next wave, uh, but none of these are thankfully showing a United States threat, which is kind of a, you know, it's it's a great thing to see. But one thing, Jeremy, that I want to point out with this is the season is not over. This, this is not a dud of a season whatsoever, even if none of these things come over the next two weeks time. Right. And uh, we still think the pattern may get a little bit busier, like later September into that very early part of October. And uh, again, just because we haven't seen anything get close to land yet, uh, still have to kind of be mindful and always ready. Uh, last year, we had uh, Helene in my area, September 26th into the 27th. Uh, that was a, certainly a high impact system for us that uh, is uh, very memorable. A lot of people say it was the worst storm here since uh, Hurricane Matthew. And then before that, Hurricane David, which was way back in the late 1970s. So uh, late season storms, uh, Helene was a late one, and then uh, Matthew, that was October. Right, well, and then like we think here in Florida, you know, um, Nicole, you know, you start looking, now you're into October, November, we even had a storm. So I, I know in my community, people are always talking about those October storms. Like it seems like October is the big month. So, you know, whether or not things have shifted or what have you, um, this season also looks like it wants to be a little backloaded and, and for a very interesting cause. Let me go back over here. Give me two seconds to kind of turn a little gears, but let's look at some water temperatures, but not necessarily where you would think. Jeremy, let's look at the Pacific because we're starting to notice a bit of a trend out here. 
Yeah, so that would be the uh, sort of the development of a potential La Nina out there. And uh, La Nina is cooler water temperatures over the, uh, the Pacific there near the equator. That's a little bit over a longer time duration, but what that can do is provide more favorable upper level winds over the Atlantic basin. Right. Um, and as you mentioned, that would be kind of the, the very late portion of this hurricane season. So maybe it does provide an environment that's more favorable for development, but you still need to get those little waves in there to uh, form into anything. Right, right. So that said, at the very least, with a La Nina looking like it's wanting to form, it's at least kind of backing up this idea that perhaps we end up with a more backloaded season. And that would that would make sense. Now, we had talked about the deterministic models. Let's now look over at the ensembles. OK, so we'll start with the American ensemble. And very clearly, we see a flock of hornets out past you know outside of uh puerto rico the uh, caribbean islands trying to form something and recurve it and then kind of toward the end we start to see some signals around the gulf to watch but thankfully nothing um, very concise there european ensembles not much different here trying to develop what would be gabrielle and then switching over to the zero z just kind of watching those hornets recurving but again at the very end there's starting to be some indication there of something perhaps jeremy out into the gulf yeah a couple little signals in the gulf and also uh if you still have that image up we could show that you were mentioning the eastern atlantic uh late in in this coming up you sort of get this uh which uh, which Gabri image Gabri Gabrielle that would spin its way and then maybe something else on the European forums in the Eastern oh, Atlantic oh, I see. area. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, see, you still have uh, probably like five little lows there. So right. just something to monitor. Um, some of these have made a, a long trek this year and it seems like we had uh, Aaron, we had Fernand, and mm -hmm. even I believe it was De Dexter. Right. We're all kind of in that, that off the uh, East Coast by a decent amount curving, curving away. Well, and you know, you had mentioned that they had they had kind of taken their sweet time through. So, so let's just kind of look here and get an idea of named storm days, right? We have had this hurricane season twenty one, almost twenty two days with a named storm. So, even though some of those have been a bit longer, overall for the average, the thirty year average is twenty six days. Last year through today, we'd had twenty four named storm days. So, we are still a little bit behind there. Yeah, and. It gets a little tougher to catch up unless you start getting multiple storms, I think, going on this time of year because we're, as you mentioned, we're right near peak season coming up September the 10th. So a lot of these averages start climbing fast. Right. So here's the named storms in general as well, Jeremy. Yep. And uh, we'll be uh, adding one more to that very likely in the next week. So pretty close to average in terms of named storms last year. We were at five, so last year was clearly a backloaded season. Yep. Um, we'll see if that happens again this year, but the indications are maybe the next two weeks. We only have about one, possibly two names to add to that, and then I'll let you talk about the ACE. Right, so think of the ACE stands for Accumulated Cyclonic Energy, so uh, our ACE score right now, if you will, is sitting at 39. The 30-year average through today's date is 41. Last year, even though we had been a little slower, we had had stronger storms. Was it, was it, Dor was it the, not the, not Dorian, was it? Barrel was Barrel. a Category 5 hurricane. Right. So that one racked up the ACE numbers ridiculously. So last year through today, we'd had 54.8 ACE points. But at the, at the end of the day, we're, we're a little below, but just like we could have seen, you know, in any year, certainly we saw last year, this year could be a backloaded season and that would completely change, you know, the dynamics. Yeah, so we're just a couple days into September. Uh, the models we were looking at there, what is that, 10, 14 days on those ensembles? Yep. yep. So it yes. doesn't even really take us into that uh, last uh, 10 to 14 days of September. We're just kind of looking at the front half of the month. So we're not getting a very good idea of that sort of the last 10 days of September and then maybe the first 7 to 10 of October, which could be on the busier side. Uh, I know you always like to do this, so if you have the MJO, you could show yeah. – uh, any anything that might be sort of favorable for 
uh, development and, and where that would be located. Right. So the MJO stands for the Madden-Julian Oscillation. And essentially, I always show the globe because essentially when you think about it, if the Atlantic's hot, the Pacific's not. And in turn, if the Pacific's hot, the Atlantic's not. So looking outside right now, the easiest way to look at this is green means go when it comes to tropical stuff. Brown is not. So we know for a fact that there are several systems being monitored in the Pacific Basin, and it's very clear as to why the Pacific Basin is green. Now, looking ahead, there's a narrow window right in here where we go subtly in phase Wednesday, Thursday. That's it. That's why the system coming off the coast of Africa has that opportunity to tap into that. But once we're out of phase, watch how it's brown in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. That's September 12th. That's September 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th. So basically, at least looking at the MJO, and notice the Pacific is in phase, right? So looking at the MJO that entire time frame, Jeremy, We've got the window this week, and then there's just not much of a significant opportunity to develop anything through about the middle point of September. And then I would suspect if we, once we finally go in phase, it's going to be go time. We've not really been in phase much this year at all. No, and uh, we'll see if that happens uh, late September, early October, at least for us. That's kind of a time window. We are a little more uh vested or interested in here for maybe uh anywhere in the atlantic basin but i would say uh that would raise the chance a little yep. bit for the gulf caribbean uh areas like that that overall have been fairly quiet so far this season right. um but yeah this it'll be a good test here with the mjo with this wave crossing the atlantic because as yeah. you said there's not a huge window for it to really get going so maybe that's why the the european model is just kind of bringing the wave, and then once it makes that turn more to the north, that's almost when it starts to develop it. Right, right. Well, and, and if you think about it, it's because in the time frame, that's when the MJO, so the Madden-Julian Oscillation, ju just, it's, it's really a fascinating thing. But the overall idea is there's extra spin, there's extra lift, and it goes around the globe. And when it kind of gets to your phase, in our case, it would be the Gulf, the Caribbean, the Atlantic, there's added help and that's when you see us go in phase boom right so we're out of phase now things are not really getting going i'm telling you though if especially if we start tapping into a la nina pattern in the pacific which warms the equatorial atlantic that much more if we go la nina and then hit into mjo phase Jeremy, we're going to get two, three, four simultaneous areas more than likely trying to get going. And I'm not saying that to hype. It's just that's the way that right. these things go. Yeah. So in terms of tropical forecast, we look at all different ingredients. And what Eric's talking about is we're starting to see more ingredients that may potentially line up that yep. benefit tropical development. So that's why the chance may be a little bit higher that we see. Uh, what we term kind of a backloaded season. So if uh, Gabrielle forms this week or into the weekend, that's our seventh named storm. 14 is average. Uh, last year, we uh, certainly had more than seven as you look from September through October. And last year, think about that. I think we had Raphael, we had Sarah in yeah. November. Um, so uh, November was even busy last year, although November typically is a, a quieter month. We'll have to see. Uh, can't let the guard down. As you said, you had Nicole yeah. in November right. several years ago. Yeah, well, and, and I think, too, just in these last few years, and this is not – Jeremy and I are meteorologists, not climatologists, right? But I think if you look at these last few years, they have been trending more backloaded than front-loaded. So to me – um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we are on that upward climb. If we look at the overall activity month by month, um, you know, we, we're definitely on that upward climb for tropical stuff. But that doesn't mean that we can't still have a very, very active backside of the of the hurricane season. Yeah, even um, when you start to go down a little bit, you start to get another spike up. And that's yep. in that sort of first 10 days of October. Yep, yep. Um, and you think about that, and that was like Matthew was somewhere in that October 7th, 8th time frame. Right. Um, there's been other other systems that kind of do that. 
uh, coming in and make that north northerly turn that give a close call. Otherwise, uh, when was Ian was September, right? Yes, yes, Ian was September, right? Yeah. Okay, and then uh, Milton though last year that was uh, October. Yes. Well, and 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 I remember the big thing with that storm was everybody had already put up their Halloween decorations. It was like, all right, take them down because they're going to get blown around right. everywhere. You know? Yeah. 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 Around here, I'm kind of like, eh, try to wait almost as long as you can because here, anyone that did it early with Helene, they probably right. blew all over the place. Well, uh, and and how do I tell my kids that? Because it's like the second that the calendar struck September and they started seeing the pumpkin spice lattes everywhere. Yeah. They're like, it's time to decorate for for. Halloween. It's like, guys, you know, I, because the other thing too, is if you think about it, right, a hurricane is just earth releasing so much of its energy. And we haven't really had much of that energy release yet this season. So I do, you know, once the ingredients do all come together, you know, these storms at least have the opportunity to feed off of kind of these untapped resources. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll be monitoring it uh, in the shorter term, though. I think the news is pretty good overall for yeah. uh, our coastline. Yeah, I, I, w I would agree. So let's just hope that we can keep it that way. But as, as Max Mayfield so famously says, former director of the National Hurricane Center, it takes one storm in your neighborhood to make it a bad season. So um, do not let your guard down. And I had a lot of people, too, Jeremy, say that they already ate all their hurricane snacks and, and food. It's like, all right, <laughs> slow down. Go replenish, please. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, really the next about 45 days is uh, if you can make it through that, doesn't mean the season's over, but right. uh, at least in my area, I feel like you make it through about the next 45 days, that would take us into uh, middle part of October, right. and then at least the trend starts going down a little quicker. I but mean, our mentioned... water temperature here, we've our water temperature here, we've had a lot of the surface water displacement here in the last couple yeah. of weeks. Our water temperature is down to 78 degrees now. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, we're still in the mid-80s here in Florida, so there, there's no there's no cooling in this spot here. Uh, but but I did just circle, and I wanted to point it out, right? Like you had mentioned mid-October, but remember that secondary spike that you were talking about, Jeremy, that's mid-October. So um, yep. w whereas maybe geographically doesn't love going into your community, you know, here in Florida, we stick out like a sore thumb, you know, so. Right. We have to remember that yeah. for sure. Yeah. And, and last year we had um, hurricanes develop in November down in the Caribbean and try to come north. So right. um, it can happen. It, it can, has, and will. Whether it's this year or another year, it will. So, um, all right. Yeah. Anything else to add, my friend? No, I think that's it. And uh, this time next week, we'll likely be uh, talking about at least a, a named storm out there. Let's let's just hope that the the models keep consistent with this keeping the heck away from you and I. I think that's that's the bottom line here. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be a perfect scenario. Very good. All right, my friend. Thank you. Good talking to you, and thank you all for joining us from sunny Central Florida. I'm Wesh meteorologist Eric Burnus. And in Savannah, Georgia, I'm WJCL 22 chief meteorologist Jeremy Nelson. Take care.